Shabbat Shalom and welcome everybody. We're so thrilled to have so many of our congregants here tonight who you all who are here are representing a large group and we'll have some more people come be with us next week who spent so much time reaching out to so many other members of our community to just check in and see how people are doing during this very difficult time. And we are so grateful to you for doing that. Um, that small act of kindness really brought so much comfort and blessing to each person who you called and in turn brought so much blessing to the entire community. Thank you so very much for all that you have done and continued to do. And so I ask you to join with me in the honor of lighting the candles. We're going to light our candles right now. Okay. And one, one, two. Continue with the blessing. Blessed are you, eternal our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. Amen. Amen. God of our forefathers and our foremothers, bless these beautiful individuals who have helped bring strength to our community during this very difficult time. May they go into this time of Shabbat and experience a time of joy and of peace and of rest. And for all you who are watching, may God bless you and also give you a time of joy and peace and rest. Amen. Shabbat Amen. shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.
I'd like to focus this week on the Parsha of the week, in particular two verses that are so uh, central to Jewish tradition. They're in the Parsha called Kedoshim, the Holiness Code, uh, chapter 19 in the, verse of Le- in the book of Leviticus. The first verse tells us, Lo talin peulat sachir ad bokir. Do not withhold the wages of a laborer until morning. In other words, when somebody has done work for you, you hired somebody to do work for you, don't delay their payment. Now, we don't get paid every day uh, nowadays, most of us who are in the professional world, but by agreement, we get paid every week or every two weeks or every month. Don't delay the payment because that 
person has already done the work for you. They may have cleaned your house, uh, they may have done errands, they may have worked your land, and they did it in exchange for you paying them. Do not delay that payment. The second verse, Lo peat The Torah is commanding us, when you work the land, when you gather the harvest, you must leave a corner of the field not harvested. That's for the poor and the stranger who need food. Uh, and furthermore, what the Torah is commanding is uh, even when you are gleaning the harvest, the wheat or the grain or the grapes, if something falls onto the land, you're not allowed to pick it up. That too is for uh, the poor and uh, the stranger. Now let me focus on each of these two verses and try and draw their relevance to modern times. First of all, pay wages on time. If you have hired someone, these tend to be people who what we might call today blue collar workers. And if you have hired them to do the work, uh, they farm your land, uh, they run the errands for you, they clean your household. Uh, they're weaker than you, you are the stronger party. And therefore you owe an obligation to those who are reliant and dependent on you. In Jewish tradition, we find nothing wrong in being strong. We don't take oaths of poverty. We don't, we think that poverty, poverty is a unique evil. Uh, we believe that uh, life is to be enjoyed. Uh, and so there's nothing wrong and everything right in being self-fulfilled and in optimizing our potential. But what Judaism insists upon is if you are strong, you have obligations by virtue of your wealth, your education, your strength, you have obligations to those who either did not have those advantages that you had or uh, for one reason or another, they are weaker than you. With respect to the te'a, with respect to the leaving of the corner of the field, the Torah doesn't stop simply with those who are blue collar, what we would call today blue collar, that is uh, employed, but uh, not making as much money as you. The Torah then goes on to focus on the underemployed or the unemployed, the ones who need charity, except we don't really have a word in Judaism uh, that is called charity, uh, which implies nowadays I'm giving out of the goodness of my heart. It makes me feel good. I'm beneficent. I want to give to those who are weaker. That's generally how we understand charity today. From a Jewish perspective, it's an obligation. You must attend to the poor. You must provide uh, the corner of your field that is not for you to work. Yes, you have this whole big field, most of it is yours, but a corner of it, a corner that everybody sees, is uh, devoted to those who are what we would call today either underemployed or unemployed. Not only is it unseemly to withhold the wages of a laborer. Not only is it unseemly not to provide for those who don't have a job, who need uh, your provision, you're providing for them. Not only are those things unseemly according to the uh, Parsha of the week, they are unholy. They're sacrilegious, they're blasphemous. Some of what you own is not for you. It belongs to the general community that needs what you have in abundance. Now, why these obligations? Why do we have obligations to those who make less money than we do or who do not make money at all and therefore cannot support themselves and their families? The Torah is emphatic. 
It's about human dignity. And human dignity is not negotiable. The blue collar worker has equal moral worth and equal moral standing as you do. His dignity or her dignity does not come from you. It's not for you to provide that dignity. It comes from God. And God has provided every human being with equal moral worth and equal moral standing. Human dignity from the Jewish perspective outweighs profit, it outweighs status, it outweighs achievement. The Torah demands, honor the dignity of labor. That's why you must pay the labor on time. We have a tendency, those of us who are more accomplished in life, we have a tendency, whether expressly or by implication, to dishonor the dignity of others. We have a tendency, if we've made it, to say to ourselves, look at me, I look at all the accomplishments I have, look at all the degrees I have, look at all the money I have, look at the palatial abode uh, that I uh, can uh, retire to. If those laborers wanted what we would call today blue collar workers, if they wanted what I have, let them do what I did. Let them go to the best colleges. Let them work as hard as uh, as I do. And thus we have a tendency, whether we want to admit it to ourselves or not, to overestimate our own worth, including our own moral worth, at the expense of those who are not as strong or not as accomplished as we are. Uh, the tendency, therefore, is to incline towards an inability or an unwillingness to identify with, to sympathize with others, with their hardships, with their struggles, with their pains. All they have to do is be more like me, is what we tend to think. And therefore the Bible commands us, it's not a suggestion. You don't have a choice in the matter. The Bible commands us, pay the worker on time because his dignity, is equal to your dignity and he is dependent on you and his dignity comes from God. As for those who don't even have a job, you also have an obligation to preserve their dignity. You do not have a choice and you must preserve their dignity in a manner that upholds their pride. And that's the reason why the Biblical verse provides not for you to give a bushel of wheat to those who are hungry, who don't have a job, who can't support themselves. It's not simply handing out a check. Rather, you leave a corner of your field so that the underemployed and the unemployed, those who cannot provide for themselves, do the work themselves so that they preserve this sense of dignity. Most people don't want to hand out. Most people want to work. They want to provide for themselves and for their families. In 1968, three weeks before Martin Luther King was assassinated, he gave an amazing speech in Memphis, Tennessee. The one he gave three weeks later is more famous, more well-known, because it was his last speech uh, before he was assassinated the next day. But he gave an incredible speech three weeks before in support of uh, the sanitation workers who were striking in Memphis, Tennessee. And this is what he said. You are demanding that this city, Memphis, will respect the dignity of labor. So often we overlook the work and the significance of those who are not in professional jobs, the so-called big jobs. But whenever you are engaged in work that serves humanity, said King, and it is for the building up of humanity, it has dignity, it has worth. 
These words are as true today as they were back then. I hope that we see more clearly now during these days of crisis, how far we have deviated in this country from the right path and by doing so have dishonored the word of God. Who are the ones who feed America? You know, there's a developing meat shortage now in the country. Uh, meat packers and factory workers have fallen ill because the conditions of their work incline them more to be exposed to the coronavirus. And we are being told that there might be a food shortage, disruptions in the food chain uh, in the United States. Who are the ones who transport this food? Truck drivers who tirelessly traverse the highways and byways of the United States. Who are the ones who bring medical personnel to hospitals? Subway drivers and bus drivers. Who are the ones who keep the stores open? Grocery store workers and clerks. Who are the ones who keep the lights on? City, city electricians who we probably never give a passing thought to. Who cleans the streets? Precisely those sanitation workers who King, Martin Luther King in 1968 was so sympathetic to and wanted so much to honor their work and their dignity. King's prayer was this. One day, our society will come to respect the sanitation worker. For the person who picks up the garbage in the final analysis is as significant as the physician. For if he doesn't do his job, diseases are rampant. All labor has dignity, King thundered, seeking to encourage the Memphis sanitation workers and to prick the conscience of the country. King thundered, you are reminding the nation that it is a crime for people to live in this rich nation and receive starvation wages. How sad that these words still ring true 52 years later in 21st century America. Remember, and this is what we learn in the Torah portion, Judaism insists that it is a crime an offense against God for any person to live in this rich nation and go hungry, to live without a roof over their head or have access to basic medical needs. When we come out of all of this, we can and should do much better. Shabbat Shalom. Arhu et Adonai, Hamevora. Baruch Adonai, Hamevora. Leolam bahe. Baruch Adonai, Hamevora. Otanu, 
ובשעריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם בארץ מצרים להיות לכם אלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני אלוהיכם אמן Oh, 
Kodeinu mi ar lakim Bagolinu mi ka kole aritzi Eme emuna hakurzut Umalkuto beratzon kiblu harem Boshe o Miriam o vene Yisrael Echanu shira besimcha raba Yamru hula Who is like you, Adonai? Who is like you, Adonai? Shamiru le 
In these days, we are finding that there are so many people in our lives who are in need of healing, either of body or of spirit. And so we offer a Misha Berach, and we pray that we will feel God's presence and feel the feeling of shalem, of wholeness, that will give us shalom, peace. Misha Berach, 
Avoteno vi imoteno, Abraham Yitzhak vi Yaakov, Zara Rivka Rachel Valaya, Huyavarech et Hacholim. If you are praying for healing for someone and you'd like to share their names aloud with us from wherever you are, please do so now. May the Holy One be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. And let us say, Amen. We turn to page 282 for the Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol Latit k'dula l'yotzev reshit Shelo asanu k'goye ha'aratzot Velo samanu k'mishpachot ha'adama Shelo sam chelkinu k'ahem V'goyr alinu k'choy ha'monam V'anachnu k'orim u'mishtam Chavim umodim lifnei melech malche hamlachim hakadosh baruch hu shehu nota shamayim beyoser aretz umoshav yekarov shamayim imal ushchin atuzo ushchin atuzo begove meromim hu Elohim. Enod, emet merkinu efezulato, kakatu betorato, verdata hayom, verdata hayom, bershevota eleva becha, ki adonai huha elohim, bashamayim mimal, ve alha aret, ve alha aret, mi. Our thoughts now turn to those who have departed from this earth. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. If you are saying Kaddish for someone and you'd like to share their names aloud from wherever you are, please do so now. We rise as one community and turn to page 294 for the Mourner's Kaddish. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shemei rabba, be'alma divrach yurte v'yamlich malchute, b'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'v'chayei d'chol b'et Yisrael, ba'agala u'bizman kari v'imru, amen. Yehei shemei rabba mevorach le'olam u'almei almaya, yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nasei, v'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shemei d'kudesha b'richu. Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tushbachata v'nechamata, da'amiran be'alma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. Ose shalom b'imromav, hu ya'ase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high, Bring peace to us and to all Israel, to which we say, Amen. We close our service with words of blessing. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. 
May God bless you and may God protect you. May God's face shine upon you and may God be gracious to you. Yisa Adonai Panave Lecha, the same Lecha, Shalom. May you feel God's presence with you always and may God grant you peace. Amen. Shalom Alechem, Malache Share, Malache Elio, Mimelech, Malache Hamelachim, Makados Baruchu. Shalom Alechem, Malache Share, Malache Elio, Mimelech, Malache Hamelachim, Makados Baruchu. Shalom Alechem, Malache Share, Malache Elio, Mimelech, Malache Hamelachim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ochen Shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi Elion Mimelech Malachi HaMalachim HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ochen Shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi Elion Mimelech Malachi HaMalachim HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ochen Shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi Elion Mimelech Malachi Amlachim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hu Ner Shalom Malachi Shalom Malachi Elion Mimelech Malachi Amlachim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hu Ner Shalom Malachi Shalom Malachi Elion Mimelech Malachi Amlachim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hu Ner Shalom Malachi Shalom Malachi Elion, mi mi melech Malachi Amlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Zeichem l'shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi Elion, mi melech Malachi Amlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Zeichem l'shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi Elion, mi melech Malachi Amlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Zeichem l'shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi Elion, mi mi melech Malachi Amlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem. Join me for Kiddush. Vayir vayir vohakir yom hashishi. Vayachulu hashamayim veharetz Vachal tzivam Vayachal Elohim bayom ashvi Melach toi shir asa Vayishpot bayom ashvi Mikol melach to asher asa Vayavarech Elohim et yom ashvi Vayikadish oto Kivon shavot mikol melach to Asher bara Elohim la'asod Savri rabotai v'chaverai L'chaim Baruch atarunai Eloheinu melech olam Bori peri hagafen Baruch atarunai Eloheinu melech olam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvoto V'ratzavanu Meshabbat kotsho v'yahavahu v'ratzon hinchilanu Zikaron l'maasei v'reishit Ki hu yom t'chila l'mikra hekodesh Zeichel l'tziyad mitraim Ki v'ainu v'achaita V'yotainu k'idashta מכל העמים ושבת קודשך מאהבה ורצון הנך אתנו ברוך אתה אדוני
Shaddai, Mikadish, Hashabbat. Baruch Atarunai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. Amen. Peteavon. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. May this Shabbat bring in a week of peace and of unexpected joy in unexpected places. And wish you all a Shabbat Shalom.